of rookie minicamp. We both are obviously following a lot of the people that were at rookie minicamp and the beat writers, the people talking about what they saw. Philly's got some interesting players this year, and, and and two of which that I glossed over during the draft and got ripped for in the comments were Sidney Brown, the safety, and then uh, is it Jomo? Is how you say his last name? The seventh round draft pick. Yeah, Jomo. Yep. Both of those players apparently had a very good rookie minicamp. Were very very impressive, and you could throw Tyler Steen in there. I mean, yeah. listen, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I saw Tyler Steen get drafted, and I said, listen, Cam Jorgens is still going to win that job. After what we've heard so far from rookie minicamp, which, again, they're not going to talk bad about these guys after two days of non-padded practices. But bye, Steen bye, bye. apparently is looking pretty good. Sidney Brown looks pretty good. Ajobo looks pretty good. I'm like, okay, how wrong can I be? I hope I'm wrong <laughs> on all three of these guys. But so far, they sound like they're pretty good. They looked really good. Yeah. I, I know there was a lot of hype from Ajomo, like whenever he was just drafted, that yes. people were like, whoa, that's a big steal. And I know PFF had him as a top 100 player on their board. So to get him at big you know steal. the seventh round pick, yeah, obviously a huge steal there. But uh, his interview, did you hear Ajomo's interview? I mean, I didn't. the story on him is unbelievable. So he started kindergarten at three years old, he enrolled in college at 16. What? He played five years of college football. So he's 21, but he's you know, a scene, I mean, a red shirt senior, but he played five years. He's unbelievably smart, but his interview, I mean, he's, he's a guy talking about like, I'm super competitive. He's like, I've only got one life to live. I'm going to aim for the moon and shoot for the stars. He's like, I'm going to give it my all. I've got uh, so much to learn, but he's like, I'm going out every single day. I'm never going to be stagnant. I'm like this guy's 21 years old. So you talk about maturity, like Love he it. has everything. And so I was like, you know, I, I liked him, but I didn't know all the extra details until the interview and the drafting and everything else. And then, like you mentioned, all the reports coming out of minicamp is he had a great camp. I, I could definitely see him getting a spot and even playing a good rotational piece on the D line. So I, I'm really happy about it. The, the knock on him seems to be that he's not quite developed in terms of the pass rushing um but again he's 21 years old so you're not really yeah. asking him to come in there and say hey you need to be a specialist here we've got other players for that so i love it it's great uh it sounds like sydney brown too is is getting hyped to potentially be the starter it sounds like Seems most people way. if you if you've heard the same thing yeah that it's like hey Jeez. i wouldn't i wouldn't put it out of the reasonable doubt that he would be the starter on week one it, it seems a little crazy but i think it's obviously a good pick uh, but yeah, a lot of great storylines and, and in Steam, like you talked about too. I, I, I was throwing it out there just to, you know, pat myself on the back here a little bit. I was throwing it out there like maybe the Eagles are not completely sold on Cam Jurgens. You were right. That was just total speculation. And right. I could still be wrong because Jurgens could be the starter. But uh, yeah, all the pictures, all the videos, the clips and everything from Steam working with Stoutland, it, it looks a little bit more than just, hey, I'm working with a backup here. They, they might think about trying to put him as the starter week one. Which is pretty exciting as we look at the depth chart. There are some serious position battles happening with a team that was, you know, a plays away from winning a Super Bowl this past year, where you expected people to leave. They don't replace them. And so you could next man up mentality. Obviously, we talked about the offseason and how Roseman had. Think about this. You have a wide open, really four horse race at running back. Now, it's really a three because Scott is never going to be given the number one spot behind, of course, Swift, Penny, and Gainwell. But really, Swift, Penny, and Gainwell have a serious competition at training camp. Cannot wait for that. You have a wide receiver three competition that is four or five players deep. I think they're going to bring in and keep some of the guys they had at, you know, tryouts this past week. Uh, some of the undrafted free agent guys as well. Zacchaeus versus Kenny Gainwell, or sorry, Zacchaeus versus Quez Watkins is kind of the, the hot number three topic right now, but there's a battle there. You have a battle at guard. You have battles at backup tight end. You obviously have battles at, you know, rotational defensive line. You have Catavio Street and, you know, uh, uh, Jomo and Milton Williams. I mean, there are serious battles here. Linebacker is wide open. And then safety is the most wide open battle in this entire depth chart because you would think it'd be Edmonds. You would think it'd be Edmonds and Blankenship. But ESPN already has Sidney Brown starting at the free spot over <laughs> Reed Blankenship. Like, this is going to be a wild training camp where you're going to get the cream really rising to the top here and some serious position battles to watch out for. I really can't wait. I can't either. It's exciting. It, it's a little bit of a slight, you know, or maybe a lot in this point Probably of a bit, yeah. I mean, like I saw that too. And I was like, are, are you serious? Like this yeah. is the guy who played very well in CJ Gardner Johnson's absence. And all of a sudden we're just, and don't get me wrong. I'm excited about Sidney Brown, but draft him and immediately, Oh, sorry, Reed, you're, you're the backup now. I, I don't know, but yes, as we've said, and I've seen a lot of quotes and, and tweets and all this, but iron sharpens iron. 
The competition is a good thing here. This team is only going to be better for it. But I, I can't wait to see how these these uh, positional battles turn out because you've got months of this to go. And, you know, will we see some of these rookies being starters? Will we see some of the guys who've already been here kind of rise to the occasion? Uh, you know, are there moves that are still going to be done? That's also the question I'm asking is like, do you think that how he's got another one other big move, you know, up his sleeve? Is he going to sign somebody? Is he going to trade for someone? Yeah, I don't know. There's there's still so much time. We know he could do it at any point, even right up until the season starts. But it's already with the group that you're looking at and what they're trying to build, I'm ecstatic. I can't wait. Let's talk about well, maybe a, you know a, a signing here. Andrew puts a really good comedy. Says Dean and TBD at inside linebacker makes me nervous too. I hope the Eagles scoop up one of these guys who didn't get fifth year options like Queen or Simmons or maybe Devin White. We talked about all of them in terms of you know Queen and White and Simmons as potential trade options. Linebacker is that spot to me where if you get into training camp and it's week three or you maybe had you've had one preseason game. And how he's looking at the guys, and he goes, I don't have it here in Morrow and Dean. Because we assume that Dean is going to be a starter. That's not guaranteed. We all want that to happen, not guaranteed. I think Morrow is going to be the starter, but that's not guaranteed either. If he looks at these linebackers, once we get to training camp, there could be a situation where he says, we're not good here. This is a liability. Let's change things up. I think everywhere else, they're going to feel really good about. I think, I think they have enough safeties to do so. I think that if, you know, Sidney Brown isn't ready, Reed Blankenship is hovering and obviously fine. I thought he played very, very well. Kayvon Wallace is talking like he's going to have a really big year. Who knows if it's no missed tackles. No missed tackles. No missed tackles. Have a lot of tackles to miss, but he still <laughs> says it. Yeah, you know, listen, we, we love you, Kayvon, but he's not a lot of tackles to miss out there. How's your cover skills? But linebacker to me would be the one that would happen. But like you said, it would be a CJ Garner Johnson type signing where it would be very close to the start of the season because Howie would look at the guys for weeks on end up close in training camp and say, well, we don't have it here and we need to have it here. Yeah, yeah. But that's a, I mean, it's a great position to be in because there's yes. a lot of depth. There's a lot of battles going on. And you're right. I mean, we can't count solidify for sure, but. Uh, without going to an absolute lock, I mean, I think you probably would say this, that N'Kobe Dean is just about an absolute lock because you drafted him for a reason. He's probably going to be a starter. Again, you're not say a hundred percent, but I mean, he's a Georgia guy. He's got all his guys there. He's got a chip on his shoulder. There's so many reasons for how he to move with it. But like you say, I mean, if, if you go through a preseason game, you go through camp, go through preseason, you're like, this is not looking so great. Yeah. Then I think that the move is going to be coming because he's going to make something of either combination of next year's draft picks if you're going to trade or there's there's obviously options out there already to sign players you know and so you could just do that but uh it's it's again it's a great position to be in because you're not going like oh man like we don't have players that can kind of compete for these positions you know do we have some depth in other spots i mean the two biggest components like what howie and the eagles always build is o-line d-line and you yeah. look at all the competition across the board here like it's a fantastic spot to be in so the other areas where again how he doesn't view it as highly, certainly with a linebacker. It's like, okay, that's fine. And if you don't have your exact combination there, it's still plenty of time to figure that out. And so I think it's a fantastic position to be in. A couple of other questions here. Ohana means family says, which wide receivers do you guys think we will keep on the team? I think we'll keep six. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Zacchaeus, Watkins, Covey, and Jaden Hasselwood. I think it's six as well. And that's a pretty solid group. I mean, I... I have no no issues with that six. I think for sure, obviously, the first three. Watkins is going to make the roster. I talked about it today. They could try and trade him, but he's going to make the roster. Covey, because he's your really true only punt, punt, only real punt returner at the moment. And then I think I think Hasselwood. I mean, he's going to have to really ball out in preseason, and it's tough when you have backups throwing you the football. Ian Book and uh, uh, the quarterback that, that that they got from Stanford. Uh, yeah, Tanner McKee. McKee. Yep. But I, I think yeah. that that's the six. I I, I really do. I could see that. Yeah. Certainly as of right now, again, another name could be thrown in the mix, but as of today, that would be, I think a rock solid group there. And, and I I'm excited. I know you just alluded to it a second ago, but again, we go back to the whole, uh, Alameda Davis, Zacchaeus, Quez Watkins, who's wide receiver three, the battle there. Quez is obviously ticked off about, it. he's got a chip on his shoulder, but that's, that's great. Like this is going to allow the cream to rise to the top. And so I can't wait for it, but yeah, that group right there, the receiver unit, uh, and uh, there's been reports too. You probably saw them of how, where the Eagles rank in terms of how much they pay the receiver group. And I think they're what, like 20th in the NFL. So it's a great spot to be in. And it was, it was funny because as you look at the teams who've been successful, most of the teams have less money that they pay to the receiver group. So is there a correlation to that? Maybe, maybe not. You can look at tons of analytics, but it's still a great position to be in because you've got two 
absolute beasts in AJ Brown and right. Devonte Smith. And then you just throw in the third receiver where two guys could very easily be wide receiver three. And unfortunately one of them is not going to get it, but it's a great position to be in. Uh, Isaac Torres says, Thomas, after signing all the rookies, how much cap will we have? We end up for one more elite player. I think I will save it for mid season. We can sign depth. Sue as an example. It, it's about, it's about 13 million after signing the rookies is what I saw. They had 17 cost you four to sign the rookies there. You're, you're, you're sitting at 13, which is enough. That's enough for Buddha. That's enough for, I mean, Devin white with some weird restructuring, I guess it's plenty for Patrick queen or Isaiah Simmons. It, it, it's enough for a move. If they wanted to make a move, let's say that. Yeah, plenty to make a move for one one big player, one acquisition. He can either extend like you talked about. How he's a whiz with a cap, obviously. So he he could figure it out, but definitely enough room for one big move there. Jose says, let's trade for Bijan Robertson. I don't know who that is. <laughs> that sounds like one of the Duck Dynasty's uh, <laughs> brothers there. And we did we, yeah. an hour without mentioning Bijan. It feels good. Uh, it almost feels that's, good. Yeah, that's the first show by almost far. I mean, yeah, good. I think we made it like 10 minutes on yeah. one show before yeah. the draft. Uh, yeah, this is the, you know, it, you're obviously that's kind of a joke because you're not trading for him at this point. You're, you're too rock solid. You already got Swift and everything yeah. else. But um, I, I'm excited too. I mean, if we want to talk about the, the comment on Swift, it, it's like, because I think they're saying, yeah, what's your take on Swift? It, yep. I'm excited, and it's also very similar. Um, it, it's funny on this because it's very similar to me for Rashad Penny, right? Because we've got a guy in Rashad Penny who can be phenomenal whenever he's on the football field, but he's got the injury issues. And then you got DeAndre Swift, who, according to Pro Football Focus, and I think there was one other, um, I can't remember who it was, but that the grades based on just performance actually graded higher than Miles Sanders. Yes. Unfortunately, he just can't stay healthy. And so you've got two players who have a ton of potential, but it is, it's just a question, hey, can they stay healthy? But you know what? If there's ever a season they're going to do it, it's going to be behind an offensive line like this one. And so I'm telling you, this, this team, this dynamic, if they are healthy, and they don't miss games, or let's say that each of them misses like one or two games, but that's it. The numbers rushing that we're going to put up is going to be absurd because they've put up great numbers behind not great or just average offensive lines, and it's just been the health concerns. But if they make it a full season, I, I can't wait to see what the numbers will be because it, it'll be through the roof. What I love is the is the physicality of both of them. Philly has not had a big physical back since Blunt and Ajayi, and it feels like they've yeah, got, yeah. Got re recreated that. Now neither of them are as big as Blunt. Blunt was kind of his own his 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 own type of gravy. I mean, he was much more big and much more physical than any other running back of his era. But it feels like the physical power back is is there. Now they're both quick. They're both elusive. They have good legs. They can move laterally. I mean, they catch the ball in the backfield. All of that is true. But they're thick. They're physical they're going to run you over they're going to absorb contact and sanders he wasn't great at that and i love miles sanders i would have resigned him although the money was too much we all get that i do think the swift trade is the reassurance on penny i think they had to have somebody else just in case he got injured and i think that the injury history for both him and swift is excuse me a little bit too high and now they bring in both of them that way you kind of have your chances of still having one out there right and like you said if, if, if Rashard misses six games, Swift misses four, Gamewell misses two, like you're still going to have a combo of these running backs in there. And if you keep Trey Sermon on the practice squad, you can call him up if necessary. I, I think overall what they did at the running back spot is exactly what teams should do in the modern NFL. <laughs>